Welcome to the Copper Spice YouTube channel, and thanks for joining us. C++ has been adding support for date and time. Are we there yet, or is more needed in the language? Time to sort out STD Chrono. In older versions of C++, the only support for date and time processing were the functions inherited from C. The C++ standard changed all of this. New classes were added to provide built-in date and time data types. It has taken several subsequent releases to provide full support when C++ 20 added calendars and time zones. We are going to show when the various date and time functions and classes were added and in what version of C++. A few examples will be presented to introduce the basic functionality. There has been a flood of new compiler versions released over the past few years. We wanted to know what functionality has been implemented and is anything still missing? The results really surprised us. Not everything compiled, and we will explain what we discovered towards the end of this talk. Before getting into the C++ details, we believe it's important to explain how to pronounce two different words. The first is the name Chrono itself. There are a few different ways we've heard developers say this name. Chrono is a prefix in English used to create a compound word. It comes from the Greek word chronos, which means time. You may hear some developers say chrono, however, we believe this is inaccurate. We're going to use the root origin and use the Greek pronunciation, which would be chrono. Looking at the second term, people who use American English will say epoch, with the stress on the first syllable. This will sound very similar to the English word epic, which means a legendary story. If you happen to be in the UK, the accepted way to pronounce this word changes to epoch. Both are correct, and the way you choose to say it will depend largely on where you learn to speak English. So what does the word epic mean? It has multiple dictionary definitions. However, in computer software, it is defined as an instant of time where we start to measure from. In order to treat time as a number, we need to choose a single moment as the zero point, and then we can measure how much time has elapsed from that given moment. The choice of which moment to use as the epoch is actually arbitrary. One of the most common points to choose is midnight on January 1st. Almost all Unix platforms chose the year 1970. Microsoft decided to use the year 1601 for the Windows OS, and legacy Apple Macintosh systems measure time starting from the year 1904. For reference, GPS satellites use an epoch of January 6, 1980, and the standard for generating a UUID uses October 15, 1582. STD Chrono is a namespace. It is not the name of a class or a library. This namespace contains a variety of related classes, templated classes, functions, and type defs. The design for what functionality should be in STD Chrono took several years to develop. One of the main objectives for the committee was to provide separate data types to represent one, a duration of time, and two, a single point in time. A key factor in the implementation of these two data types was to provide precision in date and time calculations by using integers internally instead of floating point numbers. These are the initial classes which were added in C++ 11. The system clock provides access to the primary real-time computer clock. The value of this clock is maintained by the operating system. The epic used by this class will usually match the epic used by your platform. The steady clock provides access to a point in time, 
and is not affected if the user changes the system date or time. This makes the steady clock very useful for timing operations, which is valuable for benchmarking. The epoch is usually equal to the moment in time when the computer was booted. The templated duration class is used to store a number of ticks, which indicates a certain period of time. It also stores the length of a single tick, which is a template parameter. As an example, a duration object could represent one minute with a count of 60 ticks, where the length of each tick is one second. The time point class is also templated and stores the number of ticks relative to the epoch for a given clock. This object stores the value for a specific moment rather than a length of time. The API for the duration and time point classes includes functionality for arithmetic operations. For example, you can compare two time points to find out which one occurred earlier. You can also subtract two time points to obtain the duration of time between the given points. In addition to the four classes we just mentioned, one other clock was added in C++11. It is a class to handle a high-resolution clock. This clock was intended to be more precise by measuring time in smaller units. The standard allows this clock to be an alias for the system clock or a steady clock. Most library implementations follow this practice and do not implement a separate high-resolution clock. The C++17 standard expanded the chrono classes by adding rounding methods to both the duration and time point classes. These new methods support operations like rounding a time point to the nearest hour. The release of C++20 included several major enhancements to the STD chrono namespace. Several new clocks were added to support the new time zone classes. The UTC clock implements coordinated universal time and includes leap seconds. The standard for international atomic time is represented by the TAI clock and does not include leap seconds. The GPS clock was added to represent global positioning system time, and this clock also does not use leap seconds. Since the TAI clock does not add leap seconds, it is ahead of the UTC clock by 37 seconds as of 2017. The GPS clock is ahead of the UTC clock by 18 seconds as of 2021. The reason these are different is because the epic for the TAI clock is January 1st, 1961, and the epic for the GPS clock is January 6, 1980. Both of these clocks will change over time and drift further from UTC time. One of the best additions in C20 is support for formatting date and time output using operator less than less than. The other functionality they added includes conversions between different time zones and computing times based on a calendar date. Here is a simple example which shows how to retrieve the current date and time and then display the output. The code on line 1 has been supported since C++11. As a reminder, STD is a namespace and chrono is a namespace. This means STD colon colon chrono is a namespace inside of another namespace. Another way to say this is STD colon colon chrono is a nested namespace. System clock is therefore a class within the chrono namespace. Now is a static method in the class system clock and returns the current moment with a data type of time point. 
When using a version of the standard prior to C++20, there are limited ways to display the output or stream the data to standard out. Lines 2 and 3 will convert the time point to a C structure data type. On line 4, a legacy C API call is used to show the result. In C++20, we can use the code on line 5, which calls the less than less than operator to format the time point value and stream the data to standard out. This line of code is easier to read, type safe, and does not rely on legacy C code. We mentioned Kronos supports arithmetic operators, so let's look at an example. This example starts the same as the previous one, where line 1 retrieves the current time by calling the method now. The second line will add this time point to a duration, and the result will be a new time point. The call to STD chrono hours passing the value of 24 creates a temporary duration object. Hours is defined in STD chrono with a using declaration and is simply a type def for a duration. The first template argument is usually an integer data type. The second template argument is a ratio indicating how many seconds are contained in one tick. The value of 3600 in this ratio represents 60 seconds times 60 minutes, which is one hour. Since the value of our duration object is 24 ticks, this equates to 24 hours, or one day. Sadly, there is a slight problem with our examples. The simplified syntax, which uses operator less than less than to display or stream the time point value to standard out, may not compile, even when you have C++20 mode enabled. So why would this happen? In order to stream the output, your compiler needs to support operator less than less than for the time point data type. This feature was really added in the C++20 standard, but that is not enough. Your compiler and standard library must actually implement the functionality. It can take a while before vendors are able to implement various features, and this one has been slow to show up. GCC did not support operator less than less than until the release of version 13.1, which was in April 2023. They are still missing support for some parts of STD Chrono, and these are expected to be added in GCC 14. Only newer versions of MSVC 2019 and MSVC 2022 support the less than less than operator, as indicated on our chart. What is a bit strange is the latest version of Clang only provides partial support for STD Chrono, and as of Clang 16, they still do not support this operator. We believe STD Chrono offers some very nice functionality and is worth using. If your compiler does not currently support this operator, using the legacy C API is a decent workaround. In due time, we strongly believe all of the major compilers will provide full support for STD Chrono. For more information about the CopperSpice project, please visit our website at www.copperspice.com. Thanks for watching. We hope you found the content of value. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment on this video or send us an email. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back for our next video.